Coming to you live from the K Don Studios on South Durango. It's Live Las Vegas, hosted by the voice of the Las Vegas Wranglers, Dave Carney, and RB recording artist Al B. Shore. Want to talk to Dave and Al? Call in at 257 5396. That's 257 5396. It's live, it's local, it's Las Vegas. Here are your hosts, Dave and Al. Ah, yeah, welcome to Live Las Vegas. <laughs> Right here on News Talk 720 KDWN, Dave Carney joined by multi-platinum R&B recording superstar. I'll be sure. I like What's it. Up, I'll be sure. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing amazing. Good to see you, Dave. Good to see you, too. Last week, you joined us uh, from Hawaii. You were out there uh, working on a project with an up-and-coming uh, star. She's actually uh, touring right now with Jack Johnson. Uh, really, really quickly, how's that all going? Good? Quite amazing. I look forward to actually... Bringing them to Las Vegas, and uh, of course, I'll invite you to the session, and we're going to do something together and create something like, a, I would say, an international flavor. She's such an amazing artist, and, and she's such a sweet, sweet soul, and she has two partners, uh, Mike Love Music and the other young man, which I don't remember his name, so forgive me, but... It's like Bob Marley relived. Ah. He's got the spirit of Bob Marley, and it's I, oh, I can gotta love wait it. For this. So this will be on a new album project, right? Absolutely, brand the, the new album which I'm working on right now called Signature Albert Joseph. Oh my goodness, he's getting all grown and sexy on us here. No more Al, be no sure. More we've got to go Albert Joseph. I love it. All right, well, right now we've got to jump into our new segment. This is a big day here in the news. Absolutely. All right, well, we're just going to go right to our news. We, we had this little thing planned for it. But, uh, Albie, you know, getting stuff hot off the presses here at the KDON News Studios, uh, we peeled off a story. Kobe Bryant is right now being lambasted by Jim Brown, by the agency known as Hope, uh, by a number of other prominent African Americans for not coming out in support of Trayvon Martin. Now, originally, the reason that they had asked Kobe about this case a year and a half afterwards is the Miami Heat are wearing a patch to show uh, solidarity for, for the 17-year-old uh, who was slain in Florida streets about 18 months ago. And Kobe, in this, in this article we're just reading here again, thanks Angie for pulling that up, basically said that, you know, if we wanted to evolve as a society and as a culture, why should I feel the need to take a stance on this as an African-American male? Obviously, Al, you're an African-American male. I'd like your thoughts. Well, you know what? Uh, first and foremost... It's most, as an artist in particular, you know, obviously we have what's called freedom of speech and freedom of what we will support and will not support. Obviously, the Trayvon Martin situation, um, I call it a tragic event, um, you know, and I do have a very strong opinion in regards to, you know, just when you see certain things like, you know, the young lady who was defending herself, she shoots a gun in the air because she has an abusive husband. And she gets put away in jail for, for many, many years or what have you. And there's no leniency or just in the terms of a woman just defending herself. And then you turn around and you have a, a guy shooting a young male. He happens to be African-American. So obviously it's going to be, you know, they're going to pull the, the, the race card sure. in terms of, okay, well, this person is this race and this person is it. At the end of the day, this is a young, important male yeah. that, that can contribute to society. And unfortunately he was slain and then the person gets off. So, you know, obviously the system has a little bit of twerking to do, you know, for lack of better terms. Uh, and, you know, it really needs something really needs to to really be put in line and put in order. Um, but in all fairness, I mean, obviously, I would really like to hear directly from Kobe Bryant in terms of, you know, because I, I have a tendency of not, I will never judge anyone because you never know what it could be something you think he might have been misquoted then in, in, in this type of thing. All right, well, you know what we want to do here? We want to open up the phone lines because this is a subject, Al, uh, we haven't talked about at all here on the show because it happened uh, so long ago. But with Kobe Bryant in the news, I want your thoughts out there at 257-5396. That's 257-5396. Let us know here on Live Las Vegas, what do you think about Kobe not standing up for a fellow African-American? Now, Al, I, I think that Kobe did make one, one fairly valid point. He says that, you know, we have to look at every case – uh, through the eyes of no race at all, that it, it has to be judged on its individual merits. And I do agree that that is something that we should do. But in this situation, uh, it seems it seems that for the African-American youth, having somebody like Kobe Bryant come out, you know, and really stand behind Trayvon Martin uh, would be something that is expected. So I can't oh, necessarily absolutely. say that no, it's, that it's Dave, out of bounds know, Dave, that they expect that. Right. Dave, you're correct. And very specifically within... And within our community, within the African-American community, it is very important to support 
uh, you know, very strong causes, you know, very strong, you know, very specifically because, you know, there is a journey that, you know, we take personally. And, you know, just like whether you're Jewish or whether you're African American or whether you're Muslim or, you know, whatever association you're with, you are truly behind what your cause is all about. Yeah. And obviously, you know, just like they try to make, you know, and not making a comparison, but, you know, when people try to make Bill Cosby spend money or anybody who has, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, well, you should be supporting this. You know, you have to leave it up to the individual. Yeah, Let's absolutely. Call. All right, we're going to take a call. And again, phone lines are open 257 5396 257 KDWN. We've got Ron on the line with us. Ron, thanks so much for joining the program. How are you today, bud? Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, Ron from Las Vegas. Hey, Ron, uh, how are you? You know, I remember this case all the way from the beginning, okay? And right from the get go in the newspaper, the very first day, white man this, white man that, white man this. And all these guys from New York City running down there. You know, three people were killed in Florida over all this rioting that the Al, what his name is, went down there and Jackson went down there and all this good Reverend stuff. Reverend Al Sharpton know, and Reverend Rez- Jesse Jackson. You know, and, 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 and it turns out it's a white man. It's, it turns out the guy's, his mother's from Peru, which makes him a South American Indian, which is red. His father was Jewish, which could be anything. He ain't even an American American. He's so, a Peruvian American. So, Ron. He's an Indian. Ron, let me so, ask you. So, what's going on with all this race stuff? That's what I couldn't figure out. Now, I want to hear more excuses. This is baloney, man. Well, Ron, let me ask you, in, in, in specific to the comments that Kobe Bryant made. Now, uh, he, he was basically coming out and saying, I don't have He's to support. Right. Okay, so you, you agree with Kobe Bryant. Right, sir. He's well, 100% right. Because it was wrong from the very first day when they said it was white man. All right, well, Ron, I tell you what, I mean, I really appreciate your uh, your phone call here. Uh, and we want to hear more from you guys out here in Las Vegas, 257-5396, 257-KDWN. Ron, uh, if you're still listening to us, you're a free uh, prize winner from the Max Pond Treasure Chest. Go on down uh, to the Northeast Corner, Sahara and Jones. Pick it up. Again, 257-5396, talking about Kobe Bryant not wanting uh, to really come out and defend uh, Trayvon Martin. Now, uh, a lot of other stuff that we're going to have to talk about here, Al, and we're going to transition a little bit from uh, Kobe Bryant being uh, – upset, uh, you know, about having to maybe be put in this position and, you know, forced to kind of come out and take a stand to a man here in North Las Vegas, northern Las Vegas, actually, that is is taking a real stand against the federal authorities, a gentleman named Cliven Bundy, uh, who has run over 6,000, excuse me, 600,000 acres of land uh, about since 1877, is right now getting the squeeze put on him by the Bureau of Land Management Good boy. for cattle that are running you know, not wild, wild on his property, but the BLM is saying they're running wild. Now, this is causing a, a big stir because the Bundy family, and it's not the whole 600,000 acres, I apologize, uh, that they have homesteaded or have been a part of uh, since 1877, but they had a longstanding agreement with the state and with the government to use this. What do you think about the Bureau of Land Management coming in? Is it something that they just have to do, or is the Bundy family really onto something here? Like, you know, stay off my property, stay off my land. <laughs> Big, Sounds fun with big, Bundy, doesn't big it? Big shout out to the Bundy. That's right. <laughs> Chicago's you know, finest. But I believe this is 80 miles outside of Las Vegas. That's in right. Yep. right. 80 miles north of here. Yep. Correct. Uh, you know what? And also, I think it just really... Now, is this particular gentleman, is his business utilized for, uh, you know, the food industry? I mean, is it something that... Is it just his hangout? I mean, does he like cattle in his backyard does he like to smell i mean you know i, what, I what, believe what's the real deal i believe he is a cattle rancher the bunkerville uh the bunkerville ranch that he has you know inhabited in him and his family for over 100 and you know 50 years uh, has has always been as far as in in my research been a place where they have sold cattle uh right. sold them for various purposes i don't know if it's for food or you know if it goes to the restaurant or what they use the cows for but right. it looks like right now these cattle are causing a big problem 80 miles north of las vegas and and you know al from uh you know talking to different folks here in in town that the resources are so precious that when they get gobbled up uh, by by something or somebody that they don't want you get very protective of it so absolutely again one of these really interesting cases that doesn't happen too much around the country because 
not many places around the country have 80 percent of the state owned by the federal government. And, and this obviously being a very rare and extreme case of somebody trying to hold on desperately to to an antiquated property law. Can you law. say the squeeze? The squeeze. I can say the squeeze. <laughs> but, you know, again, this is another one of these things that I'd love to hear from folks in Las Vegas, a very libertarian crowd. So give us a call, 257-5396. We're going to step aside, take our first look at traffic here on Live Las Vegas. When we come back, more with Al B. Sure and myself. Stay tuned. Dave, that voice comes. And at 115 in the Kid on Wonder Better Credit Union Traffic Center, this report brought to you by Farmers Insurance. Farmers Insurance believes the more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. To find your local agent and get smarter about your insurance, call 8896 Farmers. That's 8896 Farmers. Get a new incident on the Beltway 215 eastbound, the Las Vegas Boulevard on ramp. North 95, that's north of Eastern in the cleanup stage. Eastbound Summerlin, east of Buffalo. Nellis at Tropicana, Casita Way at Torrey Pines, injuries there, and Bonanza at Las Vegas Boulevard. For the Kid on Wonder Better Credit Union Traffic Center, I'm Jim Dallas and News Talk 720 KDWN. Hi, this is Ken Thompson from SportsX Radio, inviting you to join me each and every night, Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 p.m., right here, 50,000 watt, AM 720 KDWN, for the greatest in sports talk, breaking down all the games. SportsX Radio, Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 p.m., sponsored by Canner Race and Sportsbooks. Late Lovata, host of the Real Estate Zone, broker owner for First Prime Realty Group. Listen in every Saturday from 7 to 8 a.m. while he answers all of your real estate questions. That's every Saturday morning from 7 to 8 a.m. on 720 KDON. The world's fastest American made motorsport is returning to Las Vegas. Experience your rank to witness 8,000 horsepower nitro burning cars tear down the track and have unlimited access in the pits at the summerracing.com NHRA Nationals. This weekend at the Strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Kids 12 and under are free in general admission. Get tickets today at LVMS.com or call 800 644 4444. You're a part of it. The NHRA Nitro Generation. American made. You hear a lot of talk about gold these days. What, with the stock market and more upheaval than tumbleweeds in a tornado? The world-famous Max Pond is your gold spot in Las Vegas. Don't just send your gold into some random TV guy for pennies on the dollars. Go where you can see what your gold is really worth and get guaranteed market rate for your gold, silver, diamonds, and more. Come visit the world-famous Max Pond in Las Vegas at the northeast corner of Sahara and Jones or online at maxpondlv.com. Now back to Live Las Vegas with Dave Carney and Al B. Shore on News Talk 720 KDWN. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to Live Las Vegas here on News Talk 720 KDWN. And I tell you what, the most fun you're going to have on a Friday afternoon anywhere, hands down, period. Got to keep it locked in from 1 to 2 p.m. Me and my boy Al B. Shore. And his, and his Eminem might say Al B. Shore. But that's, you know, that's just because he's Eminem. But we all say same thing. I'll be sure. Now you got a new album coming out. You're going to be, uh, you know, Al Joseph. This is going to be awesome. Yeah, you know, hey, Hammer, MC. <laughs> Whatever. That's uh, right. You, get, you know, listen, you grow up, you, you, you get the same awesome audience. Uh, they just happen to be a little bit more sophisticated, more money in their pocket. You're going to move some units, buddy. It's the remix. It's the remix. I love it. Uh, well, we're, we were still talking here, uh, Al, on the other side of this break, uh, about the Bureau of Land Management seizing uh, some land from uh, Clive and Bundy, a gentleman who has been... And a rancher on that land. 600,000 uh, acres. Yeah, 600,000 is what they're closing. I don't think he owns all of that or not. He doesn't actually literally have title to any of it, uh, but his family has homesteaded it since 1877. We've got John on the line with us here. John, thanks so much for calling Live Las Vegas. Uh, do you have a thought here on this uh, BLM case? Yeah, I sure do. Um, I don't know a whole lot about his operation. I read quite extensively on it, but it's probably an antiquated law that uh, they've abused over the years, you know, passed it down through generation and generation. Right. I used to background cattle myself, and I know a little bit about it, and I assume he's backgrounding, getting them up to a certain size or weight, and then selling them. And basically, he's living off the land for free, and, and uh, you know, I had to pay when I backgrounded cattle uh, through a rancher in Colorado that uh, he he had part of his was owned and part of it was uh, BLS ground also. Right, so right. we paid a certain X number of cents per pound of game, and then we paid the rancher, which offset the cost of his grazing rights on the BLM portion and his own own uh, portion. 
so I guess, you know, my theory is there's nothing free in the world. And am I against it? Yeah, I guess it's, we're probably subsidizing it to a certain amount. Yeah, well, I mean, I would imagine that any time, you know, you're living for free on government property, which we have to pay ridiculous amounts of, of, of our tax money to, to fund. Yeah, you can't it, call it, it tradition. No, it, it, it really, I mean, it's it's one of those things that, you know, if he wants to, to really go by the homesteading law, I would recommend to Clive and Bundy that he relocates to Alaska because I think they're still the last state in the, in the union that is actually letting you homestead absolutely wild property. Now, in... in Interesting. In in Nevada, 80 miles north of Las Vegas, which really now, as you know, John, too, 80 miles north of Las Vegas is a lot closer than it used to be. Um, That's right. You, you look at Because of way. all of the development. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Well, the, the so development. much development going on in Las Vegas. I mean, that's what makes it such an amazing city. Uh, you know, and in the outskirts as well. You know, people don't realize it's not just the Strip. That, we have guys, amazing, we're amazing land. To, to really discuss is the, the economic impact of it. It's not just the federal government's getting going to get that much for it. However, the last I knew, he was running a, a couple thousand head of cattle up there, and every pound of gain is worth a dollar to a dollar fifty, depending on the market situation. Yeah, prime real estate. It's yeah, ex- exactly. A lot of dollars. Location, location, location. And you know what, John? Really glad to hear from a former cattleman. Uh, and this is a great call. Really appreciate the call. Now, again, everybody that calls us here on Live Las Vegas uh, gets a free prize courtesy of Beasley Broadcasting and the world-famous Max Pond. All you have to do is take a trip down to the corner of Sahara and Jones. Uh, visit the Superstore inside. You'll be able to find a prize of your choice. Now, Al, we're going to have to transition in here to another interview we've got with a downtown project maven. Last week, we talked to Ashton Allen, uh, the music coordinator for the downtown project. Today, the container. That's right. Today, we have Mike Henry on with us. Mike, thanks so much for joining us here on Live Las Vegas. How are you? I'm good, fellas. How are you all? Man, fantastic. Talking Absolutely a lot of amazing. Talking a lot of good news here. Uh, you know, Kobe got himself in a bit of trouble, and uh, there's a cattle rancher taking advantage of all of us, apparently. But uh, with that being said, we're, we're really glad we've got great weather here in Las Vegas, and downtown Las Vegas especially uh, is the place to be right now, Mike, and that's why we want to have you on today. Uh, first of all, tell our listeners what your role is with the downtown project. Sure. I'm the, I'm the head of programming here for uh, downtown project for all the music venues that we are uh operating and building down here in the in the footprint and um including container park where Cheryl Crow will perform next Friday. Cannot wait. This is gonna be amazing. In, yeah. in fact I think it's what a thousand tickets at what thirty nine bucks, so it's very affordable. You know, you're doing a great thing, very specifically. You know, you, there's so many Cheryl Crow fans out there. She's an amazing artist, performer, very humble, very sweet young lady, and mm-hmm. goes all the way in when she performs. So, come out and have a good time. A- absolutely, definitely. and and you know what? Is Mike? there a website for the for the uh, tickets? There, are, uh, just Eventbrite dot com. If you just go to Eventbrite and uh, Eventbrite dot yes. com. Just okay. type in Cheryl Crow, it'll uh, it'll come right up for you, and uh, the ticket links are there. Um, it's a great opening act on the bill as well. Charlie Washam, uh, he's a great Warner Brothers artist, and our amazing local artist named Chabriel opening the show. Wow, wow. yeah, I've 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 I've, uh, I've caught that uh, that performance before. Very good stuff. Yeah. Now, Mike, let, let me ask you here again because we're talking with Mike Henry, uh, program director for the Downtown Project, Mike and. We're looking at this Cheryl Crow concert, and you know we're seeing a thousand tickets, thirty-nine bucks. There's got to be a catch. Why is Cheryl doing this concert? What is this supposed to be benefiting? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So this is uh, this, this benefits two great charities. Uh, Feed the Children is the national charity sponsor, which is an amazing organization. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, and then we've also partnered with our, our favorite local Las Vegas charity, uh, Opportunity Village. So proceeds from the event um, will go to both of those organizations. And people, people at the show will get to learn a little bit more about uh, the work that both of those uh, charities are doing to, to help us here in Las Vegas. That's a beautiful thing. In fact, I may have a, a composition that will fit appropriately for the, uh, the cause. <laughs> oh, give, give, a, give a composition uh-huh. to the cause. Uh-huh. I like that. Absolutely. Uh-huh. We're going to make, uh, make that trend on Twitter. Just uh, go official, I'll be sure, hashtag composition for the cause. Um, Mike, I mean, you, you obviously Feed the Children National Organization, one of the best, like you mentioned. And Opportunity Village here uh, in Las Vegas is probably our, our top charitable organization. We've got a lot right. of great ones, Shade Trees, you know, Boys Town. But Opportunity Village puts so many people to work gives so much back to the community it's really great to see the downtown project partnering and and mike i'd like you to talk to us just a little bit as well about downtown las vegas itself and 
and your involvement with it and how much you've seen this grown under the guise of the downtown project. Sure. So I moved to Las Vegas six months ago I, uh, after 23 years living in Austin, Texas, doing uh, and working in live music there. And it's, you know, it's been astounding just to see the change just since I've been here. Um, just, you know, the number of people coming uh, downtown and realizing that it's it's not what they not what they thought it was. It's been revitalized, you know. Um, and man, and it's in it's just getting started. You know, um, you, you think about the, the change that's happened in the past six months. You think about what what it's going to look like six months from now, and it'll be unrecognizable. Um, uh, if you haven't seen Container Park, it's a, it, a, a perfect example. You know, uh, when I got here, it was a it was a dirt lot. Wow, uh, with, a, with a with a giant praying mantis. Sitting out <laughs> Mike, Mike where, where is it located exactly for for those? The listening? Fremont and Seventh Street. Fremont exactly. and Seventh Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah corner corner of Fremont and Seventh, and uh, and now there's you know um, it's, it's full of local businesses all operating out of repurposed shipping containers. It has an amazing playscape, best playscape in town, best I've ever seen. Um, the slide is ridiculous. Like I. I go on the slide myself. I, listen, and, I, uh, I tweaked my you know, ankle going down that slide with my son yeah. about two weeks ago. Okay, so I'm, yeah. I'm still recovering gingerly from that. Exactly, exactly. And, Dave, and, tuck uh, and, and roll. Stage, uh, for live music, um, mostly local acts. We do, um, you know, uh, seven days a week. Um, you know, two shows a day on weekdays and as many as four or five on weekends. Uh, so showcasing local acts for free and also uh, small touring acts. And then this will be our very first ticketed event that we've ever had at the park uh, with Cheryl a week from Friday. Well, it is a beautiful venue, and I'm, I'm really happy to see this specific area downtown just you know everything coming to fruition you know all the plans in place you know obviously tony shea and you know just the, the entire you know uh, movement that's been really growing this into you know that you planted a seed a while back they planted a seed a while back and now it's really really growing and uh, we, we're very proud of this yeah well mike i mean since you've only been in town six months i mean i'm sure you were briefed on the history of downtown las vegas and how it was seen for you know, possibly the last 20 years is quite a plighted area. Now, obviously, uh, Tony Shea gets the deserved credit, you know, that Zappos uh, and he has brought through the downtown project into revitalizing the neighborhood. But, Mike, when you look at downtown Las Vegas, don't you feel that it's an organic happening uh, more than it is a forced corporate happening, that this is something that, that folks that have been residents for many, many years, 40, 50 years, the, the wholesome bread factories, the things that go on on First Friday, that this is starting to become an organic movement? Absolutely, and that's and honestly, that's what uh, really sealed the deal for me to want to move here. Um, so I got to meet people who local business owners, people who live downtown, and you know who are, were were ready to work together to make something happen. That honestly, there's no roadmap for. This has never never been done before anywhere, you know, in the history of the world to do a to do a, an organic revitalization revitalization project of this size and. Uh, and it's exciting, you know. It was it was uh, it was enough for me to uproot and move here after you know being someplace else for 25 years. So, Mike, that's you make a very good point. I mean, also I I am a you know an official you know New Yorker, and right uh, was very very excited about coming yeah. to Las Vegas and uh, kind of reestablishing my roots here. You know, of course, my heart is always in New York, but it's such an amazing place to be. And, and just watching the revitalization in terms of the growth, and having many friends who are business owners here. Um, you know, just seeing and hearing the stories of, of, you know, this wasn't here, this was never here, this was never here, and, and how the growth in terms of, you know, even the real estate taking somewhat of a rebound, um, and then specifically the downtown area, and I have I pay special homage to the fact that you're creating something for local performers to even right. go all the way in with their craft and really, you know, showcase themselves, and, and it, it's, you know, it's quite an exciting ve venue. Yeah, from and from my end of it, you know, as, as a talent buyer and programmer, you know, the, the local music scene has 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 grown up in the shadow of you know, of the strip, which does, has, you know, it takes a toll. And the, like, you know, music music business is a tough one to begin with. Absolutely, so, but this is the um, entertainment you know, capital of the world. And yeah, so, so I, we, I feel like you know, sort of the, on the smaller level, the the, lo the local bands are getting started and working their way up. You know, there's, there's some resources that they haven't had in the past, which we're trying to fill in some of the gaps for hey, them. And hey, Mike, exciting. what do you think about in terms of, so if you're a local act here and you're really interested in maybe, you know, having a performance there in Container Park, how would they go about doing this? Absolutely. So if, 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 you, just, if you just go to the website, if you go to uh, Downtown Container Park, there's a, there's a events page and a contact page. And uh, so there's an email on there. Just what's downtown the website again? Downtown Container Park. Downtown Containerpark.com. Yeah, 
and that will get you. Um, that will get you also get the information about the park. Uh, there's a there's a booking email there that comes straight to me, and uh, we'd love love to hear from you. Uh, you know what, Mike? I, this is all so fantastic with the container park, and we've got about a minute until we have to take our next look at traffic. And I want to ask you real quick too about the Bunkhouse Saloon, another place that is really iconic in Las Vegas. And oops, looks like we're really running out of time fast. Can you tell us when the Bunkhouse is going to be reopened downtown? Soon. Okay, can't soon. Be, can't, be, can't be soon enough. We're, we're working on it as we speak, and it, it's going to be, listen, it's going to be amazing. I, well, I can't wait for it. I tell you what, I can't wait for it either. I have emceed a number of shows at the Bunkhouse when it was uh, a whole different crowd. You had cowboys in one place, hip-hop guys in the other, and skaters in another room. Uh, and it's going to be great to see what you guys are doing. Mike, so glad to talk to you today, and we will look forward to talking to another member of the Downtown Project with us here next week on Live Las Vegas. Let's step aside and take our second look at traffic. We'll be back. Traffic. Yes. The KDWN award-winning morning news with John Schaefer. Weekdays from 5 to 9 a.m. News Talk 720 KDWN, where locals come to talk. An AP Update, I'm Diane Kepley. The military planes searching for debris from Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 have now moved further north. And over the past few hours, they've been spotting more objects in the Indian Ocean. This Royal Australian Air Force pilot says crews are taking a lot of photographs. We've taken hundreds of photos today, so they'll go through each one of those looking for objects of interest. From there, we'll separate those photos and analyse them uh, ourselves. Those photos will then be put on a disc and sent away upon landing for further analysis by uh, imagery experts. So far, none of the debris that's been spotted has been identified as being part of the missing plane. Investigators are hoping any debris from the plane, though, will lead to the plane's black boxes. The NTSB's Joe Colley says the devices are designed to be very tough. These recorders are, are manufactured to, uh, to strict standards. Um, uh, they have to survive uh, salt water immersion and immersion up to 20,000 uh, feet. AP Update, I'm Diane Kepler. The news brought to you by Farmers Insurance. At Farmers Insurance, they believe the more you know, the better you can plan. Find your local agent at Farmers.com or call 888-96-FARMERS. Brought to you by Farmers Insurance. It's 132 in the kid on Run Nevada Credit Union Traffic Center. Couple of accidents on area freeways working right now. 215 eastbound, that's the Las Vegas Boulevard on ramp. North 95, that's the Martin Luther King on ramp. Also crashes eastbound Silverland, east of Buffalo, Nellis at Tropicana. And remember, major closures for tomorrow's bubble run downtown include Las Vegas Boulevard, 6th, 7th, and 9th Streets. That's between Carson and Hoover. Those closures are scheduled to last from 6 a.m. until 11 a.m. From the Kid on Monday Nevada Credit Union Traffic Center, I'm Jim Dallas on News Talk 720 KDWN. The answers to many of our nation's problems lie in the way we use our rules. It's time to take a look at things from a rural perspective. Tune in to Rural Nevada Today Show with me, Peter Lycopoulos, every Saturday morning from 6 to 7 a.m. That's Rural Nevada Today with me, Peter Lycopoulos, every Saturday morning on KDWN. Hey, Las Vegas, it's Al B. Shore and the voice of the Las Vegas Wranglers. Dave Carney, join us for the best that Las Vegas has to offer. Entertainment, sports, dining, and nightlife. Live in Las Vegas. Tune in every Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. on News Talk 720 KDWN. Why waste money on rent when you can own again? With our new Stark Mortgage, we can help you own your dream home again, even if other mortgage companies have turned you down. Call 827-3880 to speak with a mortgage specialist or visit OneNevada.org for current rates and details. One Nevada is open to all Clark County and Pahrump residents. Federally insured by the NCUA Equal Opportunity Lender. Have you ever wondered why prudent investors have gold in their portfolio? It's for protection. With all the economic uncertainty, gold is a perfect asset to help build your wealth. Gold is also a great inflation hedge. If you think money that's been printed over the past several years will lead to inflation, then gold helps you prepare. 
Blanchard & Company is the premier authority in precious metals and rare coins investing. With an unmatched depth of experience, Blanchard helps you achieve sustained financial success. Blanchard takes great pride in earning a reputation for integrity. And with Blanchard, you'll have a dedicated and experienced advisor who will be an advocate for your best interest. To that end, Blanchard's commitment to you includes a 100% buyback guarantee to purchase your investment back at any time. Call 888-410-GOLD or go to BlanchardGold.com for your free precious metals report. That's 888-410-GOLD. The Premier Authority, Blanchard. Now back to Live Las Vegas with Dave Carney and Al B. Shore on News Talk 720 KDWN. And welcome back to Live Las Vegas here on News Talk 720 KDWN. I am Dave Carney sitting alongside multi-platinum R&B recording superstar Al B. Ashore. Dave, that voice, Carney. Man, I like it when you say that. It makes, it makes me sound like I've got a cool voice. You're the superstar. Thank you. Well, you <laughs> hey, check out my voice later on tonight. Also at the Orleans Arena, puck drop 7.05 p.m. tonight and tomorrow night uh, for the Alaska Aces. Now, we're going to do something a little bit off the wall, something that we don't normally do. I have got a family four-pack of tickets to the Las Vegas Wranglers game tonight. I thoroughly enjoyed myself at the Wranglers game. It Did you? Let you me had you a great time? I had a great time. Great seats. Thank you. That voice. My, my pleasure. Appreciate you. In, in addition to, let me tell you something, the excitement in the arena is so nice to see the locals and also people visiting from out of town. Come and support the team. Please get get out and support the team. It's a fun, fun sport. You know, as, as a young kid, I played hockey, uh, you know, back in New Jersey, and I've always loved the sport. And uh, it's exciting to see it really thriving here at the Orleans. Yeah, well, we're going to give away a, f a family four-pack of tickets right now inside of our sports carnival. <laughs> the sports stories that come from everywhere. It's time for Carney's Sports Carnival with Alan Dave. All right, that's right. Carney's Sports Carnival with Alan Dave. So right now, 257-5396, 257-KDWN. The first caller that gives us a buzz here on Live Las Vegas will win a family four-pack of tickets to the Las Vegas Wranglers hockey game tonight. I will leave them for you myself. Personally, you'll have to go pick them up at Will Call. Give us a buzz, 257 53 Nine six now, Al. Gotta love it. <laughs> Al, jumping back into some sports here, buddy. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start off. It's with, an exciting time. It's it's super exciting. Come on, forget March about it. I can hardly madness. sit out. March Madness, <laughs> man. Uh, brackets have been busted. I I don't think there's one billionaire in sight. Okay, I think I think <laughs> Warren Buffett got the biggest free database you could ever wow. you could ever hope to get. Do you know how smart that man? That is, is sickly he smart. Exactly now, of course, I was the one doing. of well, one of my friends that didn't go on to Warren Buffett's. You know, send me your name, email address, and how I can forever solicit you uh, for your one billion dollars. But uh, I got to tell you, the action last night was fantastic. So we saw San Diego State go down to Arizona. UCLA unfortunately loses can in a you really say tight game. Dayton, Man. Ohio. Dayton, first time since Flyers. 2008 that Dayton <laughs> has uh, reached the Elite Eight. And, uh, actually, and imagine, but think about it, Dave. Imagine the Miller brothers. Obviously, if they go take it all the way, the Miller brothers, imagine that the household, it's almost like the Mannings. So imagine playing each other. Good point. In the finals. Yes. It was, uh, you know, was it Archie Miller and his brother... The other Miller. Yeah, the other Miller. I think it's like Cody Miller or something like that. Uh, but, no, I know what you're saying. You know, uh, the, the Miller boys playing it. Yeah, it would be fantastic. It'd be a great storyline. Absolutely. And I look forward to it. You know, and for the most part, you know, sports has changed slightly, sp specifically now when it comes to, you know, how we used to look at the seed in front, the number, you know, saying for those who don't understand what that is, is basically, you know, you'll see a ranking number in front of the team number. You know, so you see 1, 13, so on and so forth. They almost don't count anymore. No, and the reason that they don't count is because all these one and duns, Al, are, are putting schools like Dayton stocked full of four year guys, seniors that are grown men, and and they're taking it to task against these children that are 17, 18 years old. And they're staying in school. They are. So it means they're smarter, okay? They're going to take a, a good insurance job. And, and, and unfortunately, we don't have another hour. I talk about Obamacare for a bit, uh, which I thought I was going to do. But uh, really quick, we got to bring on our winner here for the Wranglers family four pack of tickets, Thomas. Congratulations, Thomas. You are the winner of these uh, four tickets to the Las Vegas Wranglers game tonight against the Alaska Aces. Thomas, what's your last name? Davis. 
Thomas Davis, you have got four tickets absolutely free to tonight's game against the Alaska Aces. Now, Thomas, are you a hockey fan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to live in Vancouver. Oh, uh, great. Great. Well, you're going to have an Vancouver, awesome eh? time. Yes, A, eh? Vancouver, <laughs> coolest West Coast city north of Seattle. Uh, Thomas, you're going to have a great time. The tickets will be left for you at Will Call. Just go there, pick them up, let them know that Dave, the PA announcer, left them for you. Just bring your identification. That's right. Thanks again, Thomas. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, where is this? We'll the, call at. The Orleans Arena is at the Orleans Hotel and Casino. So Tropicana and Arville. I- impossible to miss if you live in Las Vegas. It's that big, and sexy building. what's the time building. when you pick him up by? So, uh, well, pick him up anytime before 7.05 when the puck drops. Thank you very much. You bet you, Thomas. Have uh, a great time. And again, all of the callers that have called us today, Al, have won a prize courtesy of Beasley Broadcasting and the world-famous Max Bond. So thanks again to Ron. Thanks to John for the calls earlier. And Thomas here picking himself up a family four-pack of tickets to the Wranglers game. And, Al, I know you said you had a, had a great time, and we're glad that you were able to come An out. Amazing time. Michael Mack has joined us in studio. MaxPawnLV.com. <laughs> That's right. And, and you know, I have to tell you, you know, going back to uh, the days of uh, college with at USC, speaking of March Madness, I have to talk to you about early days on campus. Uh, Cheryl Miller and I were freshmen together. No kidding. Her little brother, Reggie, oh, the little, yeah, the little was brother. in high school. He was a junior in high school, and I was running <laughs> Big track. Big shout out to Reggie. I was running, might be listening also. Th- I was running track at USC, and we used to do pickup games against these these girls, this girls' basketball team. Well, I'll have to tell you, the first time I ever got jammed on in my life was by Cheryl Miller. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> so a few of us little tracksters played basketball, and this girl, Cheryl Miller, jammed on us. She was probably the first girl that jammed a basketball back in the day. Did I believe a dunk. so, yeah. I believe so. And and, in, in an actual game, in, in a an game. actual uh, a WNBA and game. And then a few weeks later, we had another pickup game. She brought this little guy with her, this little skinny guy, and it was Reggie. And she tooled her brother oh, yeah. back in the well, day. Well, listen, I can and tell that, you that. Re- Reggie used to get all sorts of taunts and torments from these horrible horrible New York uh, New York Knicks fans about, you know, Cheryl, Spike, Cheryl. Spike, well, let, let me tell you what, uh, Reggie, as you mentioned, great guy. I've met him a couple of times down in uh, Southern California, makes his home down in Los great Angeles. Guy. Great family. And, and Cheryl Miller scored 100 points in a college basketball game. Now, let me put this into perspective. She wasn't dunking in college at that time. It was a 40-minute game. You're scoring 100 points in a 40-minute game. Now, if Cheryl Miller could have ever played in the WNBA, I mean, it was you know much past her time. Absolutely. Had she have ever played, it is my personal opinion, she would have made the WNBA a success. She is that much of a transcendent star. It's really too bad she was so much ahead of her time. That's wilt. the only thing I can wilt say about that. Yes, exactly. Uh, in very nice stockings. Very that, nice that's, stockings. That's the difference. Now, guys, speaking of college, there's some big news out of college athletics, and this may actually spell the end of the NCAA. The college athletes at Northwestern University who petitioned the courts late last year to be able to unionize as actual athletes have won their case. Wow. What do you guys think about this? I think this is amazing, Michael. Now, I just posted on Facebook. I did a, a question, and it was more of a, a posing a statement saying, listen, to the, to, to, to the powers that be, how about figuring out something with these billion-dollar network deals where you can either compensate the players, even if we do a favored nations type of situation, but something, because obviously these guys are going, you see how hard they play. They're putting their hearts on the line night in and night out. So there's got to be some sort of mechanism that's fair on top of you know the scholarship. Obviously they're doing that, but they're also going to work. And they're working for the university. What do you think, buddy? You've got a kid who's uh, just about getting ready to be there, and student athlete showcases is, is one of these trying to, you know, head it up fast. Well, well I like I, the look. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I think reform in, in 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 all amateur athletics. You know, we have pro players that play on our U.S. Olympic basketball team, and they're supposed to be amateurs, right. playing against other world amateur athletes. We have players that are getting paid. We all know it. Uh, whether their families are paid, uh, Shabazz and Muhammad, um, or, you know, things are happening, you know. So, you know, we have to have some fairness and equity, and it's not fair anymore. And and I think uh, it has to be a reform. And I think my good friend Tommy White would love to see a union be formed here with uh, college basketball. But, you know, it's going to happen. Something has to happen here. Well, has y- to break. The, the, the heart of this issue, and, and here's the real question, why the National Labor Relations Board, who ended up deciding on this, allowed this ruling to kind of stand 
is that the Big Ten school that, that applied, Northwestern, uh, wanted to see that they were employees because they get the the scholarship, right? And they're bound under certain rules. Now, apparently, this falls squarely in line with what const- uh, constitutes being an employee. So, uh, therefore, it looks like if you're an employee as a student, you're not there for the education, Michael. Um why are you going to college now? What is going to be the the draw for some of these student athletes? If you're not going for the education, you're going for an you know an employee employer type of status. Where do you think that leaves college institutions? I'll tell you what. You know, there's a lot of discussion there. You know, how many athletes are truly there for the academic? I would say the great majority. Absolutely, eighty nine to ninety percent. Yes, absolutely. And you know, and that's the the shame of this one and done. I think that really hurt college basketball and. The NC two A's. That's why Absolutely. we see so much. Uh, you know, you know, small college uh, Dayton type of situation. Yeah, correct. I, I think that you know the reason this is coming to a head, and, and we've we've all seen this kind of growing over the last 10, 15 years, is that the NCAA is a not for profit corporation. Yet the NCAA profits in the billions, and I mean multiple billions, off of the backs of student athletes, both male and female. In addition to the merchandising. In addition to the most popular sport, which is called video gaming. Yes. You know, we sell albums for maybe, what, 12 bucks or something? They sell video games for 75 a pop. Right. They sell millions of them. And these players are not receiving any compensation for their likeness. They're using their name, the jerseys. There's got to be something. And, and, and I, I obviously, as, as a former government official, our Mike, Mr. Michael Mack can probably create some legislature at some point and uh, maybe get some ideas out there to, to move this forward. Yeah, it, it's, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, the governing body, which is the NCAA, even if it goes away, it doesn't mean college athletics stops, okay? Not every school is part of the NCAA. So something, though, is going to happen. And a shout-out to my friend Ed O'Bannon for bringing uh, ahead to those uh, video game things. he got to stop to that right away. We're going to have to step aside, take our last look at traffic here on Live Las Vegas. When we come back, entertainment uncovered with Albie Sure. Stay tuned. Yay, yay. And at 146 of the kid on Wonder Better Credit Union Traffic Center, a couple of accidents on area freeways working right now. North 95, the Martin Luther King on-ramp affected there on the right shoulder. Eastbound 215, that's the Las Vegas Boulevard on-ramp. Eastbound Summerlin, east of Buffalo, Nellis at Tropicana. And a reminder, Rainbow from Ann to Tropical Parkway will have lane restrictions through the rest of the year for a storm drain project. Tanea or Jones are your best alternatives. For the kid on Wanda Nevada Credit Union Traffic Center, I'm Jim Dallas on News Talk 720 KDWN. When your battery's dead, it's a bummer, but you know that. What you may not know is that your battery may not really be kaput. It may just need a little maintenance or a charge. So get a jump and swing into Ted Weens. If you need a new battery, we'll pop one in. And if you just need a little extra juice, we'll give you some of that. Because Ted Weens does way more than just tires. Our team of slightly obsessive ASE certified mechanics can fix anything. Because yes, we do care. That check engine light on your dash is annoying, and yeah, your car is probably running the same as it was before that thing started blinking. But here's the deal. You can't pass a smog check, and you may damage your car if you don't get rid of that light. So pop into your nearby Ted Weems. We'll quickly, easily tell you what's wrong, fix it affordably, and even do that inspection when you're ready. All under the watchful eye of our slightly obsessive ASE certified mechanics. Because yeah, we do care. If you're looking to lower your mortgage payments and been turned down elsewhere, you need to listen to Mortgage Makeovers with Ken Michaels this Sunday from 6 to 7 a.m. Mortgage Makeovers with Ken Michaels here on News Talk 720 KDWF. Hi, folks. This is Alan Thick, and as one of those TV dads, I had to teach the kids about handling money, so here goes. Rule number one. Don't mess with the IRS. They're cracking down this year. They can garnish your paycheck, levy your bank account, even your home or business could be up for grabs over unpaid taxes. It's all true. But it's also true that they're offering a new way out. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative, an important government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's one of the biggest breaks the IRS has ever offered, so now's the time. You could qualify for a tax settlement that's 75% lower than before these recent changes. The experts at Optima Tax Relief will work to get you the best deal possible. 
Don't mess with the IRS. For tax help you need, for tax help you can trust, call Optima for a free consultation. Call 800-559-8226. That's 800-559-8226. 800-559-8226. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Hi, this is Michael Mack, owner of a world-famous Max Pond in Las Vegas. You ever wondered what those valuables are worth? Had a pond question but didn't know who to ask? I have the solution for you. Join me and Dave Carney. Every Friday from 2 to 3 for Pawn Talk Live here on News Radio 720 KDWN. Now back to Live Las Vegas with Dave Carney and Al B. Shore on News Talk 720 KDWN. All right, welcome back here to Live Las Vegas. News Talk 720 KDWN, also streaming worldwide, uh, worldwide, worldwide at KDWN. I would say it's wild, it is kind of wild, isn't it? Worldwide, hey, worldwide. Three of us? Are you kidding me? That's right. No, it's 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 almost the carnival side show that we had in our sports report. And and actually, I uh, just wanted to wrap up with our our carnival uh, carnival sports parade here. Talk about Sh- uh, Shabazz Muhammad's father just really briefly. So Shabazz Muhammad's father, Shabazz, obviously went to uh, Bishop Gorman, played at UCLA, was drafted by the Timberwolves, uh, and his been riding the bench in the D-League this year, uh, but his dad is now sentenced, Michael, and Al, to 37 months in prison for a mortgage fraud scheme. This guy just seems to have a ton of problems. You know, How much do you think this affects Shabazz's play? And, and, and Michael, I'll start with you. you got a student athlete, then Al, I want the same from you. How much do you think, if at all, this affects Shabazz's play? You know, I, I, it has to affect him. Uh, it, it affected him at, uh, when he first started at UCLA. He didn't play in the first few That's games right. because of an NC2A uh, investigation. Uh, you know, when you have your family involved in something, whether it's sports or not, it's got to affect you. And uh, I feel for Shabazz, and, you know, it's unfortunate that he has to play under these circumstances. Yeah, talk about a kid that could have used a- another year or two in college had he not been under such scrutiny. Al, Al, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, a very a young, brilliant player, obviously. You know, I don't care, as Michael said, you know, what whatever sport you're playing in, you know, or academics as well. A distraction is a distraction, you know, and it's it's a very unfortunate situation that, um, you know, his father was involved with something that obviously him being on a big stage will affect him even more so because obviously it becomes a media circus. And, uh, you know, I just feel sorry for the young man, you know, just in terms of just him being able to probably thrive. I mean, because he was a very accomplished, you know, I think he was he had some he had some basketball acumen. Yeah, I would say he, he sure yeah. looks great at the McDonald's uh, All-Star Challenge. Al, you see this probably all the time in uh, in the industry you, you're in, you know, the music industry. There's uh, artists that have family members that maybe have done something that affects the, them and their performance and, uh, and Absolutely. You know, clouds their name. Yeah, and, uh, you know, outside of, you know, everyone's hands being in your pocket because they see a payday or they see the potential of a payday. And, you know, and with any any industry, you know, you're making a dollar over lunch money, and I'm sure, you know, Michael, you're familiar as well. You know, just sometimes it can be family members. It can be your homeboy from down the street. It can be your cousin. That's can, right. You know, hey. it could be, you know, an ex-schoolmate that, you know, who swears that it's their fault that you had this career. And uh, That's right. You know, it, you know, it's no prejudice to it. Keep it tight and always remember the best word in the English language, no. All right. With that being said, we're going to jump in to Entertainment Uncovered. You've worked all week. Now it's time to hit the town. We'll tell you where in this edition of Entertainment Uncovered. All right, Mr. Albert Joseph coming out with a new Grown and Sexy album. Uh, expected Signature Grown and Sexy. I was going to say, expected to hit shelves when? When do we expect you know that? What? There's no date on it as of now. Just literally started the creative process. Um, had the pleasure of having Mr. Max Pawn himself, Mr. Michael Mack. In, Singing in, with in, you, huh? Oh, it's great. Well, hey, well, I, I, I didn't get on the mic I, yet. I, I, trying didn't, to get I didn't just listen. I danced. And he, he can uh, prove to you, I danced to the song right Michael there in the studio. Michael Mack. Okay, we're going to go on record. <laughs> Michael Mack has rhythm. Really? No <laughs> holes in his soul, huh? Reagan was That's... the president. I voted for Shirley. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, no. uh, Al, speaking of entertainment uh, and all the stuff we've got going on, uh, what do you have for us this week in our Entertainment Undercover Report? Well, lots of stuff going on here, as you know. In addition to, you know what? This One of the great shows that we need to see and we need to check out is Boys to Men. Yes, These, absolutely. The, the, the largest selling male group of all time doing it big at the Mirage, uh, you know, and it's just, it's they haven't missed a step. They haven't missed a step yet, and it's nice to see 
there, and this is something I want to tell all the, the our listeners in terms, you know, if you have kids that are really wanting to be in the entertainment industry on any, any way, shape, or form, the most important thing to do is study the classics. Go back to the YouTubes and look look for the Temptations and, you know, the Delphonics and groups of that nature, even when it comes to, you know, even Kiss. You know, go back to these groups that who, who created something theatrically to intrigue the audience and to really outside of just the music. So imagine having the music and having the theatrics and, and things of that nature. So it's not so much of a circus show, but it's just good old performing. Well, and you, you take a uh, you know a look at a group like Boys to Men and everybody, uh, you know, I don't care what walk of life you're in, you have heard a song by Boys to Men and this really speaks to the the, the timelessness of just pure song. Uh, you know, a lot of artists especially nowadays, are very wrapped up in, in, in theatric substance or style over substance, excuse me. The Boys to Men group, though, have, have always been about substance. Their look was never that flashy. Uh, they, they never really went out of their way to add the pyrotechnics that some other guys did. But yet their vocal harmonies are so solid, they could be 80 years old and still sounding amazing. Do you think, Al, that that's really a, you know, another testimony to the type of music that Motown Records was able to put out? Well, absolutely, and that's where the actual single, Motown Philly, derived from, because it was a representation of continuing the legacy, the where they, you know, obviously the young man, who was a very good friend of mine, and uh, you know, longtime friend, who gave me an opportunity and allowed me to open up their tour. We called it the Any Heartbreak Tour, so it was myself, Bobby Brown, and New Edition. So, the founder, Michael Bivens, is the one yes. that actually discovered and, and put, wow. for lack of better terms, put them on. Wow. Like Benita That's Apple great. Bone, I, didn't yeah. know, I didn't know Bivens uh, was, was the one that did that. Yeah, Absolutely. He had a record company called Biv 10 back in the day, and he was under the tutelage of the uh, former president of Motown. And it was nice to see Michael. You know, he also had a group called ABC for little young kids, you know. Uh, you know, he was involved with so many different careers, but it was nice to see him t to launch because at the same time, I was putting out a group called Jodeci. Uh, yes, we recall. Right. Yes, so, good good band, by the way. So, they sold a couple of records as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it was just nice to see the you know music kind of evolving back into true vocals and true talent and and specifically when it comes to Boys to Men, that's why I'm very glad about their residency here in Las Vegas. Again, you know, if you're listening online from around the world, you're listening to maxpawnlv.com and listening live, you know, when you come to visit Vegas, make sure that you, you go and you come to the website and you, you, you see the things that are going on here because there's so much talent. There's so many things to do from restaurants to you know, entertainment, and it's something that you just really want to get yourself involved with because you won't miss a beat. You'll just actually be exhausted by the time you leave. Yeah, ab absolutely. And you know what? Yeah, great mention of the websites. We've also got to plug our new Live in Las Vegas radio. Go to liveinlasvegasradio.com. Get all your great photos of Albie Sure, See how good he still looks. Uh, you know, another one of these guys that never ages. And, uh, you know, real quick, because we've only got about another minute and a half here in the program. Great show today. Thanks again so much uh, for all the phone calls. Love the participation out there uh, from you guys. But how uh, how I Met Your Mother, huge, huge television program, uh, one that I actually didn't get into watching until maybe... You just met my mother. Uh, yeah, I did meet <laughs> I her yet. I was going to say, I did, I did meet She's your in the mother. Other room. <laughs> well, the television show, which is also a CBS comedy, is uh, coming to an end after a, a really long run. And like I said, I didn't really get to watch this show until maybe the last year, and uh, you know, there was a couple of things. First of all, I thought, how long could they drag this thing on before he finally meets the woman that's going to be the mother? I mean, that's a pretty long story. He's always telling it to the kids at the beginning of the show. And I thought, you know, how long have they been sitting here listening to this, right? But <laughs> the show is finally coming to an end. It's got a one-hour series finale, and it's uh, March 31st, 8 p.m., uh, CBS. Now, have you ever seen this show, Al? Do you, are you familiar with, with this particular program? No tengo la menor idea. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay, Michael, what about you? I haven't met Al's mother yet. <laughs> okay. Well, well, let me tell you, if, if you were curious about the show, all you have to do is really watch this one, because apparently this will be where he meets the chick. So for the previous 8,500 episodes, they didn't mean anything. This is the one uh, you have to watch. Now, everybody that's been listening to us here on Live Las Vegas needs to stay right where they are. Stay tuned, because Michael Mack and I are coming up with Pawn Talk Live right here on News Talk 720 KDWN. Al, see you next Friday, buddy. Absolutely. And i got to give a big shout out to Team Curry Subway. They got a brand new location at the hospital right next to it's the, the Somerville Hospital. Great. All right. Well, thanks so much. Uh, we'll see you next Friday. Michael, see you in a few minutes here on Pawn Talk Live.
luxury shops in Las Vegas aren't new. What is new, however, is luxury meeting value. At the world-famous Max Pond, we specialize in marrying the two. With some of the finest selections of watches, designer handbags, sunglasses, and more, the luxury never stops. Every day, new items are added in-store and online. From Gucci and Chanel to Hermes and Louis Vuitton, Max Pond delivers all the top luxury brands at a fraction of the price. Visit us online at maxpondlv.com or browse our showroom in Las Vegas. The world-famous Max Pond, where luxury meets value. First Friday Foundation presents an intimate evening with Grammy Award-winning artist Cheryl Crow, April 4th at Downtown Container Park. All I wanna do is have some fun. Proceeds benefit Feed the Children in Opportunity Village. Limited tickets are available with general admission starting at $39 plus service fees and are on sale now at eventbrite.com. Oh, why's he always gotta be calling me when